Do you know what I want to ask you, if you don't mind? Um, I know you lost your mum when you were about seven. Um, and I lost my daughter and my grandsons were seven and ten. And they never ask me questions, you know. And I, I wonder, now that you know what unconditional love is like, uh, I just wonder so what difference that's made to you about that mother-child or maybe what you missed by not having your mum. I mean, I, it's very difficult, 30 years ago, it's very difficult for me now to kind of feel sad or what I miss because the life that was formed out of that has been quite positive eventually. So I look back at it now as I'm a mum, I mean, the thing that I think about, I really just put myself in her shoes and just how devastating that would have felt. Um, but I, I think I, 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 was never, I never had that protective mother figure in my life. So I've only got a two-year-old at the moment. But I don't think I'm going to be a massively protective, overshadowing mum. I think I'll, I'll want him to experience the independence that I experience, but also knowing that he has me at all times to fall back on. Did your mum sit you down and tell you that she was going to die? No, 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 no. I don't think I really knew. I don't until think I really happened. knew, yeah. And did your grandparents then bring you up? Grandparents brought me up until I was 10, and then my aunt and uncle, who I call my parents now, even though I have a dad who I'm very close to. I've got... There's lots of people. See, that's <laughs> interesting. It's that's interesting to me, anyway, because you sort of think that you're really going to suffer so much yes. if a parent, and yet what you're saying is that the people who brought you up actually gave you that security anyway. Well, that's what I wanted to put into the book, because like, there's different ways to become a mother and be a parent, and there's a lot of people that would say, oh, a child needs both parents, and my view is, as long as a child is loved, yeah, yeah. I really believe that you'll be absolutely fine. And how's, how's Chris taken to, to being a dad? Terrible. He's a nightmare. <laughs> he's, he's, he's brilliant. I mean, I knew he'd be good. You know, he's from good Irish stock. They're yeah, very yeah. family oriented. I knew he'd be brilliant, but he's actually he's blown my mind a bit. He's very he's so hands on. He he just he just did you does plan as much the first baby or was it unexpected? Um, we planned yes. Yes, we planned. Yeah. I allowed him to touch me. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, okay, we're going to do this. Um, yes, we did. We did plan it. And I, I, you know, I was. I even at the start of our relationship, I didn't know if it was what I wanted to do. And then yeah. it was just. I woke up one morning and was like, "Fill my womb. I need it. I <laughs> so need it." It wasn't him. Not say pressure, but it wasn't him saying, "Oh, I really want children." No, no, no. We... It wasn't pressure. But I think. Um, I think he would have, he's a natural dad. He would have been disappointed. I'm not sure what would have happened if I'd have turned around and said to him, I'm not going to do this, but that didn't happen. So. You know how we're all defined, in a way, by our jobs, whatever we do? When yours faded a bit, because you had great success mm. here, and yours faded in Hollywood when you married Chris, how did you feel at that point? Well, it was... What happened was I went out there to film a series that didn't get picked up for a second series, but I was living out there. Now, if, I, if I'd have moved home, everything probably would have been fine, but yeah, I was yeah. just a bit too proud to move home, so... I kind of uh, lost momentum a bit here. I felt, you know, I felt rubbish. I'm a really ambitious workaholic, so it was, um, it was a bad time. I even find it weird talking about it now because it feels so long ago, and it's, it's, it was a couple of years of me not pulling my finger out when I eventually did. But then, actually, in a way, you know, without sounding too kind of California about it all, it kind of pushed you to pursue your writing, which is kind of what you'd always wanted yeah. to do. Yeah, well, I started off as a writer, and then TV was the accident in yeah. some ways, and then I kind of fell into that, and then. Um, I was writing a column at the time and an editor called me and she said, the way that you write in your columns, I think you'd really speak to teenagers really well. And um, she said, pretty much on the call, do you want a two-book deal to write for teenagers? Oh, <laughs> I was oh, like, well, right, this then. was the call I was really hoping to get today and let me think about this that, one, yes. This one is 